That is good match management by Ikaru Nakamura. Remember, we see the eval bar go up and down. The players have no idea. And that looked like an equal position. The same amount of material for both sides. So now we're in game seven. It's four to two Hikaru. Are we going to see a King's Indian from Mag? We might, and we saw King's Indian earlier from Hikaru Magnus saying, give me some of that. Will Hikaru play Bishop D3? Oh my gosh, he does! We have the oh, same position with colors reversed. A little match strategy, a little a little verve from Hikaru Nakamura and smiles by only one player. Magnus is not amused. <laughs> and just like the recent movie, that smile is not pleasant. That is going to haunt Magnus Carlson oh, because good, Bishop D3 induces bishop g4 looks very logical and then the bishop would have gone back to e2 so he says anything you can do i can do better and he just says let's go magnus you're gonna have to come up with something new and another perk of putting the bishop on d3 is that it can slide back to c2 and later on once the knight appears on c5 as it frequently does in the king's indian the pressure on e4 often forces white to contort himself with the bishop nicely sitting on c2 white can just keep going about his business and this move h3 we saw Carlson play G4. Ikara says two can play at that game. They certainly can. And for Magnus, he has to figure out which strike he wants, E5 or C5. He chooses neither. He plays A5. He wants to gain space on the queen side and not allow a bayonet-style attack with pawn to B4. So mm -hmm. I think that Magnus is kind of playing this, like, dodgy chess. He's just sort of avoiding the tension. He's just making Ikara figure out things. But the issue for Magnus is usually that works. Except in this match, Akaro has figured everything out pretty much to perfection. He most certainly has. And I think this opening choice by Magnus it signifies that he is ready to take on more risk. He wants to wipe this two-point lead out going into the three-plus-one portion. He knows how confident Hikaru is in that notorious title Tuesday time control. And Magnus doesn't want to let this lead persist because every game you play when you're down by two, you might go down by three. And Hikaru is not known to give away big leads in the SEC, even against someone of Carlson's caliber. No, and you and I both majored in history in college. And well, history for Magnus does not, he does not want to repeat itself because the only time he has lost the five plus one time control was against Maxime Vacher Legrave in 2020 semifinals. And guess what? He lost, he lost that match. match. So he lost the segment four and a half, three and a half. And that's the only time that has happened. It's the only time he's lost in the SEC. So Magnus, he needs to get things right. He needs to just play solidly, not take unnecessary risk, but also kind of make things a bit spicy. And that's exactly what he's doing. We have in some ways a similar position from their first Kings Indian affair. Once again, the colors were reversed in that game. No, you're not seeing things. Sikaru was indeed on the black side. Now he's on the white side and he's taking a different approach on the King side. Robert, the reason you don't want to go G4 here is because the knight is going to jump into f4. Never go knight back to f6 in these positions. That's a King's Indian crime. You don't mind sacrificing a pawn to open up that dark squared bishop. Right. I mean, let's go for an attack. And well, Magnus says, don't mind if I do. a4. The problem is a3, one pawn can attack all of the enemy forces. If you play a3, white pushes the b pawn, keeps the file closed. So I'm looking at this. I feel like Magnus, sure, he wants b5. Easier said than done, right, Danya? Because I can take, then bring a queen to e2, try to protect that pawn at all costs. Yeah, and you also have to watch out for a well-timed bishop takes c5. Normally, white doesn't want to give away uh, the dark squared bishop, but when the circumstances are right, black's position, it's really flimsy, it's cramped. And we're also not talking about the king side. At some point, white could get the wheels turning on the other side of the board with, you know, a well-timed g4. You could try even knight c3 to e2 in g4. On the other hand, you got to be very careful about not allowing b5. Uh, because Black's attack comes really fast once the B-file gets opened. What do you make of Magnus's decision to play a King's Indian against the world leader in the King's Indian? I feel like it's Knight a G little bit almost desperate. I was, I was attracted briefly to Knight G5 check, but Ikaro doesn't take the adventurous route. I agree that it smacks a little bit of desperation. And I don't appreciate that you're calling the King's Indian a desperate open. No, just kidding. I agree completely. Yeah, I just feel like Hikaru is so good at the King's Indian when he is the black pieces. So, you know, he knows how to parry off the immediate threats. And you're pointing out knight h4 to f5. The reason why that's a viable option is the knight on h5 is loose. Hikaru plays it. Uh, but something about the move is not favored by the engine. And I wonder what it is, Danya. Like, how does black proceed here? C6 is a typical plan. It doesn't look so ideal oh. right now. So what can Magnus do? So I did cheat a little bit. Apparently the best move is knight h5 back to f6. Now it's a logical move 
because it parries knight f5. But the reason knight h4 is a little bit awkward, I think, is because it's just hard to get things going uh, after the knight moves back to f6. It's kind of a one-move threat, and if black parries it, black's not playing for f5 in this position, but Magnus does not parry it. He allows knight f5, and I don't like that one bit. Even though the bishop is bad from an attacking perspective, Robert, it's integral from a defensive perspective. And I really think Hikaru can get things going on the king side once he eliminates this bishop. And I think Magnus is trying to use your plan. He'll play queen, I think, e8, and e8. then try to go b5 as quickly as possible, right? The queen, the bishop, the rook on b8 all stare at the b5 square. So I believe that's what Magnus is aiming for, but he keeps pausing. He's down two minutes two on minutes. the clock. There's an, a knife on f5. It's daggers, and he goes queen e8. But I feel <sighs> like he's just a little bit slow right now. And Hikaru's definitely not so. He can now play the move f2, f4, assuming black takes for the knight. And why can he play that move? Because there's no longer a bishop on g7. So that bishop, it had a lot of potential energy. It was preventing white from striking on the king side. Now I think Hikaru's got to step on it and play f4. Throw those pawns forward. Go for an attack. Black is very much trying to do the same with b7 oh, to yeah. b5. Like, that's Magnus's big idea. But as you point out, bishop e3 takes knight on c5, will shatter black's pawn structure. So b5 doesn't just get you an attack, doesn't win the game. It gets you a really bad pawn structure, and you better hope your attack is in time. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Fasten your speed belts. This is a good old-school attack on opposite sides. Clearly, Hikaru much, much better. The engine isn't a fan of what Magnus is doing. But at this point, Magnus has no choice. He literally has one idea in this entire position. It's to open the B-file, pile up on the B2 pawn, maybe look for some knight B3 tactics. But largely, he's playing hope chess. He is. Yeah, he is, it's wishful thinking that he is going to get an attack. But look at the clocks. Hikaru had a two-minute lead. It's now dropped to one. That's still a hefty margin for him. He's well ahead in the clock. But I just feel like Magnus, he could scare people. And Hikaru's only human. He may play like an engine. He's still a human being. And look at this. He strikes in the center, takes on c5, goes d6. And the evil bar doesn't love it. But I think from a practical point of view, it gets white activity. And that's exactly nice. what you want. Whoa. And it also gets wide a huge fork threat and another fork threat. And how do you parry both at the same time? Because F takes C5 is also on the docket to open up the D file. Oh, oh. I think F takes C5 and Queen F2 just looks terrible for Black. Everything's falling apart at the seams. I think that was a brilliant try from Hikaru. A pawn sacrifice. He didn't even take back on D6, which he could have. He hops his knight into D5. It was a clearance move. And now knight F6 checks a big threat. If D, E5, as you said, rook F1, or queen to F2 actually looks even stronger. Hitting C5, going to F6, F7. hitting F7. Oof. Everything is under attack. And apparently, Robert, I'm going to rewind for just a second. The only move in this position was knight to h5 to keep in contact with the e5 pawn. This is such an engine move, just dropping the knight Back toward the corner. Magnus played the obvious move. He's down to 30 seconds. He's backpedaling furiously and trying to keep the center patched up. I think Hikaru can play ED. I think he can play Queen F2. This is like the worst kind of position to have against Nakamura with 30 seconds left on your clock. And Although B takes C4 is an option. The B file is open. And be very careful if you're Hikaru. Do not take your eyes off the B2 pawn. If black can line queen and rook up, there are checkmate threats. But the knight on D5 covers F6, so the queen can't get there. It covers B6, the queen can't get there. Bishop E6 is trying to eliminate white's best piece. All you can eat. Hikaru just grabbing and grabbing and eating. But apparently the evil bar didn't like this move. What's the defense? I don't think Magnus can find this in 14 seconds. No, he goes knight takes e7, queen d6, queen d6, knight f6, check. Gets the queen right back. Knight c7, as you're pointing out, also oh, looks very strong. But queen h8, wow, that is so easy to miss. And then things get crazy. You can go e5, the knight jumps into c4. If Hikaru had 15 seconds at this point, hey, this would have been a game, but he's got a minute 40. He's got an eternity on the clock to figure this out. And he starts with e5. Okay, oh my gosh. gosh. Not loved by the end. Rook, Rook b5, if queen five. takes e6... You swap queens and win the d5 knight. So, uh, you know, you got to keep your material. And speaking of material, white is only up one pawn. Queen takes f6. And queen takes b5 as a desperado. He's oh got to move his... Gosh. Wait, what does Magnus do? What a shot. Oh, he by sacks King his knight. G7. And then rook takes e5 at the end. And the knight... No, oh, the knight's not trapped. It's rook b8. Wow. He just goes right for the pawn. He just wants an attack. And Hikaru could even play like king a1, bishop b1. He can curl up into a ball. Instead, he eliminates the attacker. And his rook takes and, a two a possibility, but Hikaru going for mate. He wants rook d seven. Oh, my gosh. oh this and is over. One second left. Magnus loses on time. 